Okay, now that we have our animation rigging tool kit set up, I'm going to go ahead and approach this as if we have had a brand new character we got made. And we want to go ahead and get this character rigged up and ready to, ready to be used. So let's go ahead and load and populate our, our Maya scene with our character. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up a character that I worked in in uh, one of my character design courses I did and uh, at the time we ended up doing uh, some characters based on some Destiny concept art before the game was released so I mean this was like our our shot at it so my house, mouse stops acting up here and I'm gonna go ahead and load up my Titan mesh now this mesh I've already gotten into the Unreal Engine but uh, it can be an OBJ or it can be an FBX anything if it's if it's a character mesh overall just you know polygons set up the way they are it'll be just fine uh, this character was done earlier in Unreal so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select the entire mesh itself and I'm gonna rework this entire character from the ground up because a lot of things there's a lot of things I did limiting myself when I made that character one mesh now First thing I'm going to do is, what I like to do is like when I f get ready to come back onto any workstation I go to, I end up adding in some of my bar, uh, some of my toolkits that I use, some of the icons that I use most. So you can set that up easily by going into any new shelf that you want. Just drop down arrow down into the shelves and just do a new shelf. Name it what you please. And then any tools that you commonly want to, that you know you're going to use a lot of, you can easily just come over, like for instance, I'm going to use the delete history a lot in the beginning of this. So like I'll come down to edit, I'll hold down control shift, and then I'm going to hover over delete all by type in history. And if I click that with control, control shift held down, I'll begin adding icons up here to populate my, to populate my shelf of commonly used feature, commonly used tools that I'll use a lot of. So I mean like some other ones I might do are freeze transformations. I might also use center pivot quite a bit. So I've got freeze transform center pivot. I've even got polygons and face normals. That's a, another good one I tend to use quite a bit. But I mean you can go through and these tools that you use you populate this anyhow you and go ahead and populate with the things you are going to be using for your personal preference. For me I did my own custom one. So I mean a lot of these icons I'll explain what they are as I go, but I'm going to go ahead and this is the shelving in which I built myself that I that I use. So I mean I have face normals, normal sizes, joint and uh, IK joint size cuz characters in Unreal are much bigger than you know, characters you would get in Unity. And with Unreal, I think it tries to work between what Max's scale is, 3DS Max's scales is and the same with Maya's. So from here, our character is already in our scene. We have our mesh. But what we want to do is we want to go ahead and get rid of this Lambert. And we want to go ahead and apply the materials, the textures we already have on this character. So he's not just a, a plain white Lambert. So I'm going to come down to my Hypershade. And the Hypershade can be found in our window. Rendering Editors, Hypershade. In my Hypershade window, I already have two different materials associated for this character. When I did him, I had the body, I had his head, and I had his armor split up into two different sides, two different areas, two different material slots. So they have the Titan armor material. And I'm going to go ahead and drag over my attribute editor here. I'm going to just drop it in here with the uh, channel boxes. And I'm going to bring that hyper sheet down. And within here, I want to go ahead and find my diffuse colors for this character. I'm not going to worry too much about normals or anything else, as long as he's got some kind of color on him. So I can see exactly what I'm working with when he's deforming. So I'm going to go ahead and navigate to where I saved out my texture files. I'll go ahead and go to my textures. And then I have my armor. This is the file that I should. I'll just make sure one more time that I have that saved. Okay, let me pause right quick to see what's going on. 
Oh, I know, never mind. It's because I'm having the open file. So let's see. The armor should be the diffuse that I want. This is the darker one that I have. So I'm going to go ahead and navigate to my originals. So within paint, texture sets. Okay, it's not the correct file. I'm going to go back one more time. Back to that textures file within my color displacement and normal maps. So I just want my color maps for now. So I have my armor and I have the body. And this was for his weapon. For now, I just want the armor. And for his body, I'm going to go ahead and load that one up too. Load up that color. Find that file. Load up the file, body. Open. So now our colors are associated on our character. And let's go ahead and preview that. So we'll go ahead and go up into textured mode. And everything is where they need to be. So I probably will add the normal maps later, but just not right now. So our scene is ready to go in a way for our character to begin the process of getting set up in the engine. So let's go ahead and break this character up. I already know my helmet I want as a separate model piece and I need to get everything separated so the first thing I'll be doing is I'll be using the separate the selected polygon object shells. Uh, this is going to be a bit destructive at first but before I do that I know that if I split these now what's going to happen you'll see on this clip here if I split all these pieces I select one I've already got a lot of facial, a lot of polygon faces that are just breaking themselves up into whatever shells they pleased because the vertices were not weld. So I'm going to go ahead and control Z and get back to where everything was one object. Alright, so let's go ahead and I want to hold down shift, right click. Okay, correction, I'm going to hold down control, right click, vertex select all my vertices hold down shift right click go to merge vertices and the merge vertices tool I usually have this set to point zero one it's small enough to weld any vertices that are sitting on top of each other together so I'm gonna go ahead and apply close it out and now if I come back in I'm gonna go ahead and right click go to object mode I'm gonna hold down right click it brings up the radial I'm gonna hold object mode and I'm gonna go ahead and split this up again now when I come in, clip on, click on that clip on the side of his helmet, you notice it's one piece this time instead of three to five as it was before. So all the pieces are welded together where they need to be. So first thing, uh, first thing is off the bat, I'm going to get that helmet into one object. So I'm going to select the, the pieces associated with his helmet. I'm going to go ahead and combine those. And I'm going to do the same with a lot of his armor pieces. So same with the shoulder. Combine those ones. Got his forearm guard. He's got his hands. And what I'm doing is I'm going to go ahead and I want to see what I'm going to associate together with in different layers in the channel box, as well as what's going to be easiest for me to be able to see what I'm doing when I'm when I'm painting weights onto this character. Okay, so I know I want the center belt and the main chest armor together. Need to select this little antenna in the back, or whatever that might be. I haven't played Destiny yet, but I do relatively, and I do enjoy the artwork that came out of it. They do a lot of fantastic art out of there. Select all the leg pieces. Okay, I think that's pretty good for that armor layer and I'm going to keep the helmet together with this too. It's easy enough to, to break them up again so I'm going to combine all those select those pieces and I want to delete that history again history can be found in edit delete all by type history. These combine and separate tools can also be found in the polygons drop down mesh, combine and is separate so I'm going to go ahead and associate this with a new layer. So click on this icon, we'll take every, all the mesh pieces I have selected and put them in a new layer. 
And I'm going to call this armor layer 1 at least. I'm going to shorten it out too. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and hide those. Next, I know I'm going to want the belt. I'm going to want his center fold. Yeah, I'm going to keep those two together. Go ahead and combine. Delete the history. Put those in for armor layer 2. And breaking these up into different layers makes it easier to skin, to paint weight skinning, as well as being able to see what's going on with all the deformations. So I know this is the body. So I'm going to put this body in its own layer. It's going to be a couple different pieces but put together. Save it. I'm going to go ahead and turn off that visibility for now to hide them. But now I have left is the inner mouth pieces. So I'm going to go ahead and rename this. Instead of polysurface, I'm going to go ahead and call this I left. Call this one I right. Capitalize that. Naming convention is always important. Alright, so I'm going to combine all these pieces of the teeth meshes together. I'm going to go ahead and combine those. Call us upper mouth. Oh, call us upper teeth. Be better. That one. Delete that history. Go ahead and select the gums. Select the lower teeth. Got some rancid colored looking teeth there. Combine those. Call us lower teeth. We have our tongue. And I'm going to select those pieces in which I just put together. And I want to put those within the, the body layer as well. So add selected objects. Now I have left is the uh, fur. I'm going to combine all this into one object. Because this is going to be about 100% weighting. So combine those. Call this fur. And we have the different objects that I'll name I'll name later not on the video since, it, since I'm going to keep this, these videos as short as I can. Go ahead and associate those into armor layer 3. Let's save that out. Hide it. And then we should be left with is the cloth. The cloth will be an interesting piece to go over. Um, I'll show that probably in a different video too. So we can get the Apex cloth working into not only on our Maya, but as well as in the Unreal Engine as well. So we're not using bones to drive those cloth pieces. Alright, so all our pieces of our Titan, our Titan is where they need to go. I'm going to go ahead and save out this file. And we'll call that good for the first video, getting our Titan all put together. When we come back, the Titan's polygonal pieces are going to be named what they're going to named correctly and all the history will be deleted and then within our next video we're going to start putting this guy through the animation rigging toolkit